All disease begins in the gut. Ancient wisdom spoken by Hippocrates, a Greek physician who is heralded as the father of modern medicine. His declaration is just as important now as it was 2,500 years ago. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been used on people for thousands of years, and they have stayed important and because they work. So here with me today is my good friend and neighbor, Deb. Hello. And we're going to share some more about brain health. The whole month of October, we've talked about brain health. We've talked about neuroplasticity, which is uh, creating detours around the body, or around the brain, so that we can reconnect and, and uh, remember things. Uh, Neurogenesis is the ability for our brain to create new brain cells. And uh, up until even like 15 years ago, it was thought that the uh, brain cells we were born with was all we got. And that was pretty discouraging as far as I'm concerned. Because especially if you had a brain injury, you want hope that there's something that can be done. And there is. So today we're going to talk about the gut-brain connection, which is called the microbiome. And it's pretty old now. Almost everybody knows about the microbiome. It is so talked about. There's tons of information available about how the microbiome works. So the gut-brain connection is established as fact. And we know now that the microbes determine our health and that genes are only 10% of whether we get sick or whether we stay healthy and uh, the microbes are what determine the rest of it and so uh, it's a really important part of brain health and uh, these microscopic organisms play an important part in digestion and function as well as immune health our lifestyle is what determines what these microbes, um, how they act. So mainly these microbes inhabit the gut, but we also know there are ecosystems of these microbes on our skin, in our mouth, and with women in our vaginal cavity. So the microbes travel through our mucus and therefore our lymph. So what is in the gut can travel to our brain and vice versa. In order for these microbes to be healthy, they need fiber, and these are called prebiotics. And the bacteria are called probiotics, but we also know there are beneficial <clears throat> yeast, even viruses, and even parasites that help keep us healthy. Along with traveling in our lymph, these microbes can travel along the vagus nerve. Now in other videos, we've talked about the vagus nerve and I've even shown you how to activate it. Um, this is basically a great picture of how the vagus nerve comes from the base of the neck down and uh, travels all over. It's called the wanderer. And that's what Vegas means. So it wanders all over the body, collecting information, and it's a two-way system. So it comes from the brain to deliver information, and it goes up to the brain to deliver information. And uh, so it's important for us to uh, activate this. So first thing in the morning, you you know, usually women especially, <laughs> sitting on the toilet. <coughs> and... You want to wake it up by tapping your cheekbones, bring your thumbs into the corners and just gently push. Then you take your fingers, put them together, rub them across the forehead, across the hairline, and then all the way down until you reach the back of the neck, then bring it down and then tap, tap, tap. And it's that simple. You can put some essential oils on your fingertips to activate it a little bit more. Um, but basically, you can just do that. And if you do that, you, you wake up your brain and you help the vagus nerve to 
open up and collect information. You also help to drain lymphatic because the lymphatics run along that same uh, area as the vagus nerve. So uh, if you um, if you do that every morning, and you know if you do it before you eat, you actually will activate digestion. So it may look a little strange in a restaurant, but. <laughs> You can disguise it. One of the big things it does, though, the vagus nerve is believed to influence BDNF. Now, this is brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is what helps the brain cells uh, initiate. So it can help build new brain cells, healthy new brain cells in the hippocampus. So... Digestion hugely impacts the nutrients your body has at any given moment to build and repair. It is important to eat healthy food, primarily organic or grown without pesticides <coughs> and chemicals, and um, in mineral-rich soil. But more importantly, it, it, the process known as digestion in the breaking down of that food is creating usable nutrients. So... There are three main food groups. You have fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And America eats far too many simple carbohydrates. We need to be eating more vegetables, more fruit, and um, good fats. So uh, between the ages of 25 and 30, the ability for our body starts losing uh, enzymes. We the production of enzyme decreases. And therefore, I believe that even young people who are born with uh, digestive uh, disturbances need to be taking enzymes of some sort. Now, they don't take enzymes like we take enzymes. Their enzymes would be like fennel. So that we have a wonderful supplement called catnip and fennel, and this encourages uh, the digestion. So let's talk um, a little more about how we could encourage digestion. Now, one of the things I use is Proactizyme, and it's a plant-based enzyme that you can take in between meals or you can take with meals. And it helps to break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. <coughs> now, if you've ever had your gallbladder removed, then you have a struggle with digesting fats. And we know that cholesterol is a fat. So it only makes sense that if you have high cholesterol, it may be due to the fact that you're not digesting your fats well. So taking uh, like food enzymes, which is something I take with meals, that will help to break down fats. And uh, you could take them with every single meal. So uh, in past classes, I spoke with you about the gut health and digestion, and in March of this year, we had, uh, it's still on YouTube, you can look that up on my YouTube channel, but here's the big thing, the vagus nerve plays a huge part in the role of digestion. When vagus function is out of whack, digestion is out of whack. Symptoms can include heartburn or GERD, IBD, or inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis. It can prevent the body from healing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is known as SIBO, a frequent root cause of irritable bowel syndrome. The vagus nerve is part of the system that tells the stomach to put out digestive enzymes and juices and to start the movement of the gut. Now, here's the thing. Your your mouth is like a 6.5 acid on the scale. Your esophagus is 7.0. Now, these may not seem a huge difference, but it's <clears throat> a thousand times, okay? So it's like 650 and 700. So you see the gap? Now multiply that by 10. And so it is really every uh, increment is 
exponential. Now the stomach needs to be 3.0 in order for it to metabolize proteins and to uh, kill uh, infection. So if you breathe in some kind of a oh, germ of some sort, say like somebody next to you coughed, if you don't have the right acid in your stomach, you breathe it in, it passes through the gut wall and into the bloodstream, and there you go. So it maybe uh, help you understand a little better why some people get infected and others don't. It's because of the health of their gut. So um, enzymes are the easiest thing to, to, to start implementing in a health program. So when we chew our food, we start the process of mixing the fibers in the food um, with the digestive acids and enzymes that break down that food. So it actually starts in the mouth anatomically. Now I actually feel that digestion begins in the brain because uh, you can think of a food and start salivating, <laughs> you know, yeah, or, um, uh, you know, you start those digestive processes just by thinking and smelling the food even before it gets into the mouth. That's how you can gain weight, just by thinking of food? Absolutely. It. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why I love her. <laughs> so, um, this means that uh, overgrowth of bacteria, yeast, and parasites, and even hormones can be affected by the vagus nerve. And uh, the rate of our digestion is also affected by it. So every morning, wake that nerve up, get it going, uh, do it before you eat. Um, IBS and SIBO risk are increased with more exposure to bacteria and waste products. And when you have slow motility, that's when your digestion is slow, then that makes it easier for you to get infected. So enzymes with every meal and sometimes in between. Uh, I take proactive several times throughout the day, especially during the season when it's um, moldy, uh, cool air, wet, we've had a lot of rain, and it can, um, it can spur on the um, mold spores. So digestion is the key to good health, and then there is absorption. Mm -hmm. After the food is broken down into nutrients, they pass through the small intestine into the bloodstream to go to the liver to be sorted and then go into different areas of the body. So the nutrients pass through a one cell thick layer that protects the blood from being infected. If you don't break the food down properly, it will break through this lining and eventually cause leaky gut. So once this occurs, all manner of things can pass through. Think of um, a screen door, you know, and, and part of the screen is perforated, opened up. Well, now flies can come in and, you know, all manner of things can come in. And that's what happens, hi Mindy, and uh, that's what happens in your gut. This one cell thick layer actually protects what's when things are in your your digestive system they aren't yet into the body and this one cell thick layer protects that from happening so protecting it uh, there are ways to uh, heal like if you take that screen and you weave a little bit of something through it that helps to protect the house from all kinds of critters. You can do the same thing with leaky gut. And if you watch those March videos, I talk all about that, how to uh, help your gut heal. But today we wanna to talk about the gut-brain connection. So taking probiotics is going to help the gut it's going to create the right environment because you want more healthy guys than you want bad guys. And that oh happens <laughs> when you take probiotics. So I, um, I switch off. Sometimes I take a product called Probiotic 11, which has 
11 major strains of bacteria. There really are many, many more than 20 that live in your gut, but they can often be made by other strains. And that which you find in yogurt is only really one strain. So it, it's beneficial. But what I do is I like to open a capsule and um, ramp up that probiotic in the yogurt with uh, probiotics. And so that's one way you can get more probiotics into your gut is uh, ramp up your probiotics or your yogurt. So um, one way I've learned uh, to, uh, now the probiotics need food and those are called prebiotics. And one way I know, and prebiotics are in all of Nature Sunshine's probiotics. It's called inulin. And if you, uh, <clears throat> this is wonderful season, it's apple season, get some organic apples, cut them up in like bite-sized chunks and put them in a little bit of water and cook them. And when you see the skin starting to shine, Yes, use the core, the seeds, as much as you can. Don't use the stem and you'll get benefits. Remember the seeds have B17, which fights mm. cancer. So you, uh, you know, people are all concerned about arsenic. Well, you know what? Arsenic's a mineral. Your body needs it just like everything else. It just doesn't need it in heavy doses. <laughs> Those are for killing mice. <laughs> so, um, Organic is best, but make sure they're not sprayed and wash them really good uh, if they're just regular apples. But using this type of applesauce, taking a couple tablespoons every day, you're going to feed your probiotics. And you know, if you have a happy microbiome, you'll have a happy brain. So the topic in my herbal egram, that's an uh, electronic newsletter I send out every week on Mondays. And this you can find on my website uh, under newsletters and this um, particular Monday we wrote about chemo brain now I never even know knew there was such a thing until I started researching <laughs> the gut brain connection and found out that chemotherapy in 50% of the people create this chemo brain where they can't think properly uh, there's confusion there's even anxiety depression and anger and so there this has to do with how the chemo affects the vagus nerve and that travels up into the brain and uh, you can research it yourself there's some really good information in fact there's a cute little song about chemo brain <laughs> if you youtube <laughs> so um uh there's other things that create this confusion hormones can create the same thing um uh, my daughter-in-law used to call her her pregnancy brain you know because <laughs> she would just like it was crazy she would forget things and um, she'd ask me something and then a little while later she'd ask me again and I said okay the answer is the same you know <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't changed in five minutes <laughs> so if you can create some levity uh, uh, help the person understand that it's temporary that they can do something about this chemo brain that it is not something that you know is leading to Alzheimer's or some scary thing so the big thing to know that there is hope for brain health and that the more natural products are being researched daily. Um, common sense tells us to stay away from things that inflame the brain like sugar and alcohol. Um, do things like exercise. Sleep is really important. The brain regenerates during sleep. And um, taking nutritional supplements. Um, I like to uh, use, uh, take kombucha, which is a fermented drink that helps prebiotics and probiotics <clears throat> and uh, that friendly yeast. Uh, so it's uh, very good for you. And um, there also, I posted uh, a way to make your own raw uh, apple cider vinegar. It's extremely easy. And again, this time of the year with apples being so prevalent, you if you grow them, it's a good way to use them. Um, you 
put chop them up into bite-sized pieces put them in a jar uh, put a, this one gal uh, said to put one tablespoon of sugar per apple remember the sugar is eaten up by the bacteria so it isn't like bad sugar for you even though I use raw organic sugar and then you just cover it with water now you stir this every day every morning you stir it and then after two weeks you just leave it you put a cover on it now i like to put uh these uh non chlorinated uh non-bleached filters coffee filters and you just rubber band it it needs air because it's going to be uh perking and so you want that gas to perk off and then you can store it in your refrigerator and a couple of tablespoons of that it's much um, milder than uh, Bragg's you know Bragg's is like whoa I have to mix it with water or, you know I can't choke it down um, but you can put it in drinks you can make um, dressing salad dressings with it it's a wonderful way and pennies if you uh, have an apple tree near you then uh, you can pick those apples and and it's practically free just the little bit of sugar and you know your purified water and so a um, couple tablespoons of that on a daily basis now this is from pre prep staters it's p r e p s t e a d e r s and that's found on youtube and she's got wonderful videos on on uh, doing some home things that you know are great for the stomach and the vagus nerve so you can also encourage good communication by speaking gently to your stomach take your hands and place them on your stomach and your your small intestine and you say I love you I'm giving you the healthy environment you need to grow and keep me healthy you know just a little affirmation every once in a while to let uh, your stomach know that you're grateful for uh, keeping you healthy you can use essential oils we have something called core which helps to um, keep this part of your body healthy and strong and you can deep breathe it, uh, uh, do some diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, you can take the uh, flower essence, Be Courageous. I've talked about this before and how wonderful it is to help you. Because you know what? Sometimes people out of fear, they think it's love, will poo-poo what you're doing or whatever. Just don't pay attention to them. There are thousands of... Uh, research articles out there that um, healthy things come from herbs the earth uh, the environment and these are the things that we should be using for healing our ourselves and uh, supporting ourselves so we know that um, we should do 80% good <laughs> and then we can tolerate the 20% bad <laughs> and it's all about balance and we know that alcohol kills brains, uh, smoking kills brains, uh, sugar inflames and kills brain cells. So do your research on how important is your brain for you. I mean, to me, it is me. So here are some action steps. Support the gut-brain connection by healthy eating, drinking of good water, sleep, exercise, good thoughts, and healthy relationships. Take brain-specific supplements and use essential oils and flower essences that awaken the brain and support better connections. Now, next month, I'm only going to be doing two classes in November, the first uh, Tuesday and the last Tuesday of the month. And um, my husband and I are taking a lovely cruise through the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to that. And I will be taking my health care kit <laughs> along with me. Um, but on those two Tuesdays, I'm gonna talk about the difference between flower essences and essential oils and how they differ, how they support the energy of the body. So share these videos with other people so that they too can have hope for better health. Uh, keep focusing on gratitude. Be thankful for the people around you, the flowers, the gifts of nature, the joy in this world 
and uh, thank you for viewing. Until next week, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.